The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Hello, I'm Susan Salcedo, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and welcome to another episode of Innovations in Education. Here's a look at what's coming up. First, we'll see what's cooking at school kitchens throughout the Santa Barbara Unified School District. Then, we'll take you to Lompoc to visit an amazing aquarium. Nancy Weiss is the Food Services Director for the Santa Barbara Unified School District and she oversees the mission of serving nutritious, wholesome, and delicious food for students throughout Santa Barbara District. Now let's meet Nancy and see how the partnerships with businesses and farmers help students eat better and grow stronger. I've been working in the district since 1996, and I started as a cafeteria lady, cup and fruit and jello, and serving chicken nuggets. And today, I'm the director of food service, serving up wholesome, scratch cook food. We've got 11 production kitchens serving 28 different locations throughout the community, serving over 7,000 meals a day to my beloved community. It is so important now more than ever to start serving kids a better plate. We have uh, seen the evidence of the fast food culture and what that's done to us globally. But here in Santa Barbara, it's really obvious that one out of five children is uh, prone to get diabetes or be, become obese by the time they are teenagers. The type of food that was being served in schools before, uh, the, before 2000, before the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act came on board, that food was prepackaged and based on the fast food model. And we see the results of that every day and the staggering um, amounts of obesity and diabetes that our um, community is suffering. The best opportunity for me is to be firmly rooted in whole foods so that we can teach kids how to eat. I often say we eat to live, we live to learn, and we learn to eat. And I believe that as uh, the director of food service for this beautiful community of Santa Barbara, it's our goal to make sure that kids learn to eat. We're here at Santa Barbara High School today in the very big, very noisy production kitchen on a Friday, cooking up a storm, getting ready for lunch. It's about 9.15 in the morning and uh, everybody is at their stations getting ready to go. We are preparing for multiple programs out of this kitchen. We've not only got the high school kids here, uh, probably four to 600 a day are eating with us between uh, the serving area and the cafeteria here at Santa Barbara High, but also on the mobile cafe. So we have uh, different entrees being served at different locations around campus. We have a food cart that goes out with special items. We have a student store um, that serves specialty items. And we just try to really shake it up and uh, keep the kids interested in the kind of food that we're serving uh, these days in school.
We're here at the interior of one of our mobile cafes. Mobile Cafe was a program that we started about eight years ago here in the district in the effort to keep high school kids engaged and excited about their food service program uh, in the hopes that they won't leave us and go to Milpas or any other um, nearby street that has a bunch of fast food, junk food restaurants. So our Mobile Cafe is our badge of hope that kids will stop and, and uh, have lunch with us from one of their food trucks. This is one of seven food trucks that we have in the district, and we use these food trucks around town. We serve supper from them at, um, at organizations like the Boys and Girls Clubs or Girls Inc., and we're very proud of the program. And then we also have a mobile cafe that's prepping and getting ready to go to another elementary school in our uh, community, Notre Dame. So they don't have their own cafeteria or a kitchen and we roll up every day for breakfast. We come back, we go back for lunch, and we serve uh, approximately 150 children every day at Notre Dame. I have always been interested in food. I've loved to cook ever since I was little. And when I graduated from UCSB, I knew I didn't want to leave this beautiful community of Santa Barbara, but I just didn't know really where my heart was until I landed in a commercial kitchen on State Street. That was Zello many years ago. It was a nightclub and it had an open kitchen and it was very exciting to start there from the ground up. I was in the pantry. I was assembling salads and appetizers and to my luck, one day the executive chef left and they turned and said, Nancy, you want to give it a go? And I said, you betcha. And I never looked back. A couple years later after that, I opened my own business. It was called Soho Restaurant and Music Club. It was actually a jazz club when I opened. Um, interestingly enough, the type of cuisine that I was serving uh, was very organic and, and very much a reflection of the food that we're serving today in Santa Barbara Unified School District. Our menus are one of the uh, most challenging parts of, of our work up here in the office. My trusty assistant, Ginger Sandoval, and I go to town on the menu every month. We are sure that we can just roll that menu. It was a good four weeks. Let's just roll it again. But we can't because for some reason uh, we have enchiladas back to back now or we've got uh, our commodity orders delayed. There's so much on the menu that is fluid that it is very hard every month to uh, really come up with something new but regulated, standardized but creative. It's challenging, but the menu is uh, one of our greatest works up here. My favorite part of this job is and will always be the kitchen. All my staff remarks that when I'm in the kitchen, I seem the happiest. And that's so true, and it's so easy to see why. The kitchen is a big, vast playground where you've got super great ingredients and the ability to throw together some of the most amazing, nourishing food for kids. So I am happiest when I'm in the kitchen serving up something delicious for our students. For me, you can't serve food without thinking of the environment. The two are intrinsically linked. And uh, it is a goal of this department to get as close to zero waste as possible. Along with that, we need to be very prudent about the type of packaging we use because uh, unfortunately in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when the fast food culture started coming upon us, a lot of directors of food service let go of their dish machines and their dish rooms and, uh, in, um, and replaced those with um, prepackaged meals. So it is a challenge to go from a place that doesn't have a dish room and yet you don't want to have single-use plastic. Uh, we try very hard to compost everywhere. We definitely compost in elementary school, pre and post consumer. 
So in the kitchens, we're offsetting trash by putting, uh, putting food and food scraps and all paper and compostable material into the yellow bin. And then outside in the cafeterias where kids are eating, they're encouraged to make the right selection, educating them that the blue can is for recycled, the yellow is for food scraps and compost, and that the trash can is gray or brown. And we definitely know that styrofoam cannot be served anywhere next to education and, and, uh, and students. We want to make sure that styrofoam is a thing of the past. And seven years ago, this district let go of styrofoam. Um, it cost a lot of money to let go of styrofoam, but those were the priorities that we saw that aligned with our missions, and we're very proud that we don't serve styrofoam along with our food. We're here today at the Franklin Garden. What a magnificent place this is. One of our district's pride and joy is our garden program. And here at the Franklin campus, we have a thriving, very, very living garden with lots and lots of different uh, vegetables growing. And uh, we've got uh, bird friendly landscape that helps to keep this an organic garden. We don't want any pesticides in any of the fruits or vegetables that we serve our kids. So we really feel it's important that we not only educate families and in particular our students about how important eating vegetables are, but it's also important to take it a step further and try to educate about the dangers of pesticides and toxins on our fruits and vegetables and in our food we can be assured that whatever is harvested and placed into the kitchen to be put on the salad bar is as clean and organic uh, a product as possible. really exciting when the kids can come out here and get their hands dirty and pull carrots from a garden that they grew and watched grow and then see those carrots on the salad bar in the Franklin cafeteria. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to connect kids to their food so that maybe instead of grabbing flaming hot Cheetos, they'll be more interested in grabbing something like a carrot. We're here at Franklin Kitchen in the heart of the east side where Cesar Canto and his team are cooking, getting ready for lunch. Not only do we serve the kids at Franklin Elementary, but we also serve Cleveland Elementary and Roosevelt Elementary out of this humble kitchen. We serve 1,400 meals a day for lunch and this crew is like clockwork. They're a team like no other. It seems to me when I come into this kitchen, there is such harmony that you can taste it and feel it and smell it and see it in every plate that goes out of here. There is so much love and attention to detail in this kitchen that the food is as nourishing a, a lunch that any, any student could ever wish for. I would hope that not only are we helping parents in the community by making ends meet, but by also providing a service that will in the long run teach kids how to choose a better way of eating so that they don't have to struggle the circumstances of diabetes and obesity.
The Cabrillo High School Aquarium in Lompoc offers cross-curricular hands-on educational opportunities for local students and community members. Now let's take a visit to this amazing facility. The history of the aquarium is, is really a story of dedicated people who have come together, um, who believe in the goals of the program. And um, the, the program started in 1986, where uh, one student, uh, one teacher, Dave Long, and a community partner kind of got together and worked on uh, a reef tank. And Dave Long, uh, as the director, um, he really had a passion for the ocean. He was an avid scuba diver, and um, he really loved the sea. And he wondered, you know, how can we create excitement about learning about the ocean, similar to the excitement that you know the football team generates at the at the you know stadium? Why can't we? You know, the question he asked was, why can't we have something like that in academia, where th the community comes together to get excited about academics? And that kind of was the, what spawned the, his idea of the aquarium program. The aquarium broke ground in the year 2000, and it opened to the public in 2002. It's a 5,000 square foot facility, but we have now adjoining classrooms, which are also part of the aquarium. We're open uh, once a month to the community at large. We host a free open house event uh, once each month. And right now we're hosting uh, over 7,000 visitors a year in, in our program. Many of those are elementary school groups that come in for tours. We're hosting tours uh, throughout the school day on Tuesdays and Thursdays, virtually every week throughout the school year. Today, the fifth graders showed up at the aquarium and they're greeted by one of our students and she or he welcomes the guests. Um, they, they learn a little bit about our logo, what it represents, and they learn about the elephant seal statue and, and what that symbolizes as well. And then they come into the aquarium. Once the students get into the Coral Life Theater, they are divided into four groups and then the groups come out of the theater and they, are, they go to one of four stations. The first station, for example, would be like the touch tanks. Okay, welcome to touch tanks. Have you guys ever seen Nemo before? Yes. Yeah, Nemo lives in a sea anemone, and this is a sea anemone, and we have three of them. That one, that one, and that one. You guys can touch all the sea anemones, sea slugs, sea snails, and all the other shells in here. Okay, here's some sea stars. I'm going to quiz you guys for a little bit. How many legs do they have? Five. Five, that's correct. And where is the mouth located? Do you know where? Uh, on their stomach, yeah. On their stomach, where? In the middle. In the middle, yeah. Do you want to hold one? Yeah. Okay, when you're holding them, do you feel them like getting stuck onto your hand? This is a sea cucumber. So, do you guys want to touch it? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Can I hold it? Yeah, you can hold it. Make sure he's under the water. The students will spend about eight to ten minutes learning about the touch tank animals, um, learning about where, where they would be found in the native environment, how to handle them, and uh, just interesting facts about those animals. It's cold. It's cold? <laughs> yeah, we adjust the temperatures of the water because all of the sea creatures that live in here only live in this type of temperature. And so if the water was to change, it gets stressed out. So that's why we have to keep it like this. After eight minutes, they rotate to a new station. So one of the stations has our tropical reef tank, for example. And in the tropical reef tank, um, you know, the, they learn about the, that environment. You know, the, the water there, for example, is like 20 degrees warmer than the water in the rest of the aquarium, like the water off of our coast. They're learning about corals and coral reefs and, and that particular environment. This guy's really cool, actually. So he can change colors depending on his mood. So right now he's very light in color, like a tan, because he's very relaxed. 
On this side, we have a ton of live coral. So the cool thing about live coral is it's basically a plant that has other plants living on it. Hey guys, my name's Luke and this is Cold Water Reef. So let's all go over here on this side of the tank. So over here, we have two gray smoothhound sharks. You see these two right here? So do you think they're nice or aggressive sharks? Aggressive. Actually, they're kind of both. They won't bite you, but they are kind of aggressive. Do you see these lids on top of the tank right here? Do you know why they're there? Yeah, they can jump out of the tank while we're cleaning them, so we have to be careful about not letting them jump out. All right, guys, let's go over here. Today, my fifth grade scholars and I have had the opportunity to come to the Cabrillo High School, High School Aquarium program, where the high school students, as well as the teachers, have guided my students through some hands-on learning and uh, have given my students the opportunity to view marine life up close and personal. Today I saw starfish, jellyfish. The aquarium's really cool and I really like being here because of the touch tanks. And I like all the animals in the touch tanks because they're all like different and they have different textures and all that stuff. The touch tanks were fun. We got to touch um, sea anemone. We got to also sea slugs, sea snails and sea crabs, they, they all had different textures. It was cool to see how different they are. Welcome to the shark tank. Right off the bat, what do you guys see? Sharks. Sharks? I see a stinky over there. Can, can you guys guess what kind of sharks these are? Uh, tiger sharks. Close. These are called, these guys right here, they look, they look like tiger sharks, but they're actually swell sharks. We just recently got a 750 gallon shark tank, which I was really excited because the sharks that we have here, um, like we have these two horn sharks that have been that were hatched here about 20 years ago, and now the, they, these animals have gotten bigger and bigger, and they soon outgrew their habitat, so that we it necessitated us getting a larger exhibit. So we were able to uh, get a grant to uh, pay for the 750 gallon shark tank, and almost immediately you could just see the animals' behavior. Uh, changing, they became more active, um, and they started to breed. So we actually have sharks now that are breeding in captivity. Uh, the horn sharks actually um, lay eggs. We have 13 of these eggs, two of which have hatched. Um, and actually, there's 15 in total. We still have 13 other eggs in various stages of development. So we, we're going to have a plethora of horn sharks here if all goes well. Um, and you know that this is super exciting and it's a testament to the kind of job that the students are doing. The animals are healthy, they're eating well, they're, um, they're reproducing in captivity and that's something that is really uh, pretty amazing for this level of, of education. The aquarium classes, they're called the Tourism School to Career class, that's the formal name for the class that runs the aquarium. It's one of the most popular classes at Cabrillo High School. It's always got um, students waiting to enroll. It's one of the few classes that students can take it more than one year, which we strongly encourage because students are gaining in their knowledge and their expertise and we want to be able to tap into that knowledge base because the students really run the program. They do everything from maintaining the exhibits, feeding the animals, developing the, the tours that we give and, and presenting the tours and the labs that we host with our visitors. I came here in elementary school with Megalito, who's actually in here right now. Uh, we do tours during the day in our tourism class. And um, I remember coming in here and wanting to be the person doing the tours. And so now I am, and that's pretty cool. And also, it's the program itself has made me want to become a marine biologist. I've always loved the ocean and like all the sea creatures and stuff. And I thought it was really cool that we had an aquarium. So I took the class. It's just a really fun, exciting program. It has a lot of opportunities. You meet a lot of people, you go on trips, and you just learn a lot. And it really helps you excel as a person. For as long as I can remember, I had been going to field trips at the aquarium, and I really found it fascinating. I had a deep passion for the ocean. I love every aspect of it, and I want to be able to spread it to others. 
My sister is now graduated and going to college, but she also took part in the Cabrillo Aquarium. So when I got to see her go through it, I wanted to be able to do the same thing. Students then go into our marine laboratory. During the lab, students are presented with a problem. The problem being plastics in the ocean, this plastic pollution problem. And then the students have to design a solution. They're, they're challenged to design a solution that can remove that plastic. And so this is like an engineering problem. Once they design a solution, they actually get to test it. And so they work in teams, and then they kind of check and compare how did that solution work with, compared to the other tables. And so they're basically going through a design process that engineers have to follow, and it's one of the standards that fifth graders are expected to learn. So we had our students actually sit down and examine the fifth grade standards. What are fifth graders expected to learn during their fifth grade year? And then from that, they, they choose which standards would kind of fit the aquarium theme. And then they, they examine those. They look at the performance expectations that the students are expected to do by the end of the year. And they then develop the activities to meet those standards and expectations. They then took these recycled uh, plastics, plastics that were removed from the environment, and they were challenged to make an artwork, an, a piece of art with that. They make a sculpture, and their sculpture is of the aquarium logo, which is something they get to take with them when they, when they leave the program. This opportunity is very unique for students. It's not often that you find a program like this at a, our local high school or any high school for that matter. Uh, not only does this show students what is possibly in their future, especially for students that plan to attend Cabrillo High School, but it shows them opportunities, career op opportunities, and many of these kids would never have the chance to see these animals up close and personal. Many of these kids have never been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So being able to come to a local aquarium gives them that hands-on experience and it might just pique the interest of a couple of students, bringing about a passion that might lead to a career in their future. I think it's important because sea animals are part of our world and we need to keep them safe. The students that we work with directly, our high school students, they really learn to um, appreciate the aquarium as, and they, they, have, they develop this pride and ownership in the program that really just shines through. Our mission is we want to inspire people to care about the ocean, to want to you know, take care of it because it takes care of us. And so that's our hope is that the aquarium will make an impact on people that last longer than when they're here with us so that when they go out in the real world, they make good decisions to help keep the, the ocean healthy. On behalf of the entire County Office of Education, I want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this program and I look forward to seeing you next time on Innovations in Education.